I like apples on Tuesdays. The U.S. national debt is continually rising as gone up immensely in the past six years. The U.S. national debt is over $17 trillion, almost $55,000 per citizen, and is the most important topic Congress should focus on in 2014. If we solve our national debt, we can fix many problems such as the unemployment rate and the economy. If our national debt goes down, then the taxes can decrease, which will give people more money to stimulate the economy so companies and businesses will be able to hire more people. If our debt goes down, then we can focus on other pressing matters such as our foreign relations, war in the Middle East, or conflicts in Asia, and guns in our nation. Fixing the national debt will be a long process should be started as soon as possible. It starts with our government passing a budget and sticking to it, not overspending and leaving heaping debt for younger generations to come and clean it up. The debt needs to start to decline. It may take several years, but needs to start now. Our nation needs to make a change for the better and it should start right away. We sat down with Oregon Representative Jason Conner to get some more information on the topic and to see what he thinks needs to happen. Why does the national debt continue to rise? Well, it continues to rise because we spend more in the federal budget than we uh, take in in tax revenue. I've seen a study that was done in the mid-2000s that uh, demonstrated that only about 20 cents on every dollar that's spent actually reaches the people in need. But there's a theory called the Laffer Curve. Uh, it's named after an economist uh, whose last name was Laffer. And he developed this theory that at some point, if you continue to raise taxes, you actually stop raising revenue and you may lower revenue. The debt that is issued by the Treasury is the foundation for our capital markets. This is an extremely disappointing position, Mr. Speaker, because it's clear that the Ryan budget is not a viable blueprint for governing. It was not when we passed it, and it is not now. Here's the reality. If we want to reduce income inequality, we need to boost economic growth. The Senate, the President, I continue to stand in the way of the people's priorities. Now we're trying to come to an agreement on the budget and on the farm bill, amongst other issues that are in conference. Chairman Ryan and Chairman Lucas have made serious good faith efforts to Senate Democrats. When will they learn to say yes to common ground? When will they start listening to the American people? Budget if you continue tomorrow, uh, up to a point. Now, I am willing to work with anybody who wants to have a serious conversation about our fiscal future. People say there's three things that the federal government can do to help grow the economy. Get out of the way, get off our back, and get your hand out of our pocket. One of the things we have to do is pass a budget. You know, that needs to happen every year. I mean, there's no excuse for, uh, for Congress not passing a budget. Well, a lot of the, the question about cutting spending is, uh, you know, deals in broad categories like that. And the problem is um, anybody who is committed to those things. So let, let's say you're a senior and you're on a fixed income, you have health care issues, and you rely on Medicare uh, to be able to get your prescription drug benefits, to be able to see a doctor, um, you know, to be hospitalized if you need to, and, and you have paid into that Medicare system for your entire life, your entire working life, and with the expectation that you get that health care. Telling that person, uh, well, we're going to cut your benefit is uh, inherently unfair because they believed they were going to get it, um, and, uh, and it also creates an enormous amount of concern on their part that they're not going to be able to be hospitalized if they need to, or, or they're not going to be able to get medical care or purchase their prescriptions. So there's quality of life issues wrapped up in that. A budget conference agreement will require compromise from both sides. We need to have a budget. We need to have a compromise agreement. And we need to have a sequester number eliminated and a rational number replacing it. A number that can work for America.